What is up, everybody? Josh Tapp here again, and welcome back to The Lucky Titan. And today we're here with Katie Richardson. And this is somebody I've been looking forward to for quite a while. And my wife has been looking forward to listening to this one as well. So Kinsey, this one's for you. I hope everybody listens in really. I just, just listen with all of your ears on this one because Katie is the founder of pudge.com, but she also is a majorly successful coach who's been helping people kind of bridge that gap between what I would say your financial success and your personal life success. So she's become super successful at helping other successful people do that. And this lady has been featured on Ellen. She's been on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine, which very few people can say that. She's just got a great track record, which you'll be able to check out in the show notes. So Katie, say what's up to everybody and let's hop in. Josh, so good to be here. I'm super excited to talk entrepreneurship and all of the things. It's going to be fantastic. This is, these are the conversations I look forward to. And Katie and I were just talking about this beforehand. It's such, it's so interesting to just have a good conversation back and forth about the topics we truly care about and not just you know, we're not just going to talk just tactics. So this is going to be an episode you're all not going to want to miss because she is going to provide some amazing tactics, but she has such an awesome story. And so Katie, I want to kind of dovetail into this by saying, tell us about that transition from pudge.com to where you are now with your coaching business, because it was a three month transition. That's insanity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you're asking this question. Nobody has asked me this question, Josh, and it is yeah. one of the most inspiring stories, I think. And also one of the most difficult times in my life. So, you know, I had built this incredible business. I had been published everywhere. Like I was this superstar in the physical products world, both domestically and internationally. And so when I made the decision to sell my company, it was kind of unexpected. I was looking for that strategic partner. He made a, a much bigger offer. And I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> and all of a sudden I went from having this brand and products and recognition associated with all of those things to all of a sudden that stuff's gone. And I'm like floating in space all on my own. And I'm like, whoa, what's the next move? I had been coaching people on the side inside of my physical products business. Essentially people would come to me and they would say, you seem really happy and you have a big business and you work alongside your husband and you have four kids. Like, how are you doing all of this? So I had been coaching people on the side and what was really exciting is as I sold the company, I made this jump fully into coaching and I came uh, head on with this tremendous doubt that I did not know was there, Josh. And I, I like, as I was in my physical products company and I, I jump into the coaching business, I'm like, sweet, I'm going to dominate this thing. I jump in and I'm like, holy cow, I don't totally know what I'm doing. And different who, world, sa right? <laughs> who says that my way of doing it is the right way. And I don't have any certification. I don't have like, nobody's given me authority to do this. I've just said, I want to go do this. And I just had so much fear and doubt that I didn't know was there until I made the leap. And there were days that it, like the, the thought that kept going through my mind, Josh, was who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, Katie Richardson? And I had to really confront all of that doubt and fear. And I remember days feeling like, did I just make a big mistake? Because where I was, was really comfortable, right? The road ahead inside of my physical products business was known. And all of a sudden I, I had gone, gotten to this fork in the road and I made the decision to go right. <laughs> and that was an unknown road. And as somebody who likes adventure, it was like, yay, this is exciting. And then you start going down that road and it's hard really quickly. And you're like, what did I just do? <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was the first few months of making this transition was just coming face first with all my fears and doubts that I didn't even know were there. Yeah. And I want to highlight a piece of that story for a lot of the people listening to this, because I know a lot of our listeners will come to us and say, I want to pivot. I want out of the physical product space or maybe the, the agency space. I want to pivot to coaching. That's where a lot of people want to pivot. Yeah. And, and talk us through a little bit of that. You know, you, you'd kind of briefly touch on that imposter syndrome when you switched over. And I think it's hilarious because of it, people think that people like you are, you were so successful you wouldn't have that by transitioning to a new business. You'd be like, well, yeah. I've got all of these great accolades. Obviously I could be successful. So talk to that a little bit. Well, it turns out I'm human, Josh. And <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> as human beings, it's natural to have to kind of like second guess ourselves and to have those thoughts and those beliefs. 
the opportunity is to not identify with those doubts and those beliefs, but to just see them as thoughts and to learn to question them. And the way I, the thing that was really smart on my behalf, on my behalf was I hired a coach. I hired a coach and I was like, I need help with this. Like I thought I knew what I was doing, but I need your help. And it was a huge part of me learning to overcome those doubts and those beliefs because you go from being in this world where everything is known, right? You know what you're doing and you move into this new world and all of a sudden you're opening yourself up to new thoughts. And I was getting a lot of thoughts of doubt and fear and and uh, not believing in myself. And so I had to catch those thoughts, ask myself if they were true, and, and even ask myself, are they helping me? Are they serving me? Are they going to get me what I want? And be willing to be so bold and courageous to change those thoughts. And that's what I had to do, is I, I took those old thoughts and I replaced them with new ones that were true, right. that got me what I wanted. That's brilliant. And I'm, I assume that's what you're teaching your clients now too, is that that transition because you know how to do it. Is that correct? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we hear people talk about fake it till you make it. And I don't believe in that. And that was part of my discomfort and f- fear was, am I, am I a fake? Am I a fraud out there in the world? And I had to, I had to learn how to create real belief where you wake up in the morning and you know what you're doing, you know, who you are, you know, how you're helping people and you can, truly lean into that and put yourself out there in a really vulnerable way where you're saying, you know, this is, this is who I am. This is how I serve people. And this is what I'm here to help you learn how to do in your life. Yeah. And that's brilliant. And and I love that because it's fun for me to watch people transition to coaching because a lot of successful people, their next step is just to start buying more businesses or building more businesses. But a lot of times they don't step back to the contribution stage or what I would say is step ahead to the contribution stage mm-hmm. where you're, you're giving back what you've learned and those lessons because anybody can teach you how to do marketing for your business or that next thing. But I mean, to be able to help people to get out of a horrible state into a great state, I think that's why people like Tony Robbins become so successful because there's such a need for it in our world right now. Yeah. And and it requires learning a new skill set. Like there was this point, Josh, where I had shown the world that I was a world class class product designer and I was really good at that. And I had to take on this new identity that I'm, I'm committed to learning how to be a world-class coach. Right. And, and that transition for you, I mean, doing it in three months, can we talk a little bit on how you did that first off? (laughs) Because you were literally they basically made you the offer three months later, you're, you're out of the company, basically. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. It was very, very fast. And it was very intentionally done that way. When it's your business, your baby that you created, like partially handing it over to somebody and like trying to still be there. And you're not ultimately the person in charge anymore. That's just, it's really, really hard. So we had made this decision that we were going to fully transition out. When I say we, it was me and my husband. We yeah. had done this business together and we had made the decision that we were going to fully transition out. So that meant, you know, moving out of our 20,000 square foot warehouse. It meant uh, moving all operations to the new headquarters in the Bay Area. It meant even like handing over passwords and and just making sure they understood the foundational vision of the company and having whatever they needed to move on. But the the harder piece, Josh, was just emotionally letting go of it. It was, like I said, it was so familiar and it was known. And so there were multiple times when I found myself struggling. I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back. And I kept asking myself, did you make the right decision? This is hard, Katie. Did you make the right decision? And my mantra that came from a very vivid dream that I had, I I won't go into that story right now. I'm like getting chills thinking about it. I had this dream. I just, I wanted to go back so bad because it was just so much easier And the message that I got from that dream was to keep going and that I was in the abyss and that there was something incredible on the other side of that abyss. And I had to use my courage, my faith, my boldness, my power to to get through that abyss and that there were really important things for me to learn in that abyss. And so I had to be really open to learning what I needed to learn in, in that darkness and to keep choosing 
choosing to move forward. Like that was the key to getting through that darkness, that abyss. And that's when things really started to thrive inside of my coaching was I'm here because I choose it. I'm here because I want to learn because I'm committed to being the best. That's brilliant. And, and just kind of out of curiosity was, was what was making you feel that way more? I mean, because you had the money, you, you obviously got a lot of money out of selling the company, but was it that I no longer have to work on this? Uh, is it, I don't have creativity anymore. What was kind of that big emotional baggage that you were carrying on it? I'm just kind of curious of that. Well, I think it goes back to like, I had spent time, energy, and money, including getting a degree on product design. Wow. And all of a sudden I was kind of taking that skill set and I was putting it on the shelf and saying, um, let me go see if I can learn something else. And I, I was wondering if I was being fickle, if I wasn't being consistent, if I was kind of jumping ship from a ship that was really good, <laughs> like that was very sound. But at the same time, I'll tell you, Josh, and you've probably experienced this and a lot of these other people who are listening to us today have experienced this. I was feeling called to something greater. And I didn't totally know what that was. I didn't know what the vehicle for that was, but just, I was feeling this kind of undercurrent of uh, discomfort in staying in the product design world. And so what I became curious about was, can I take the skills that I learned in product design, can I take that and bring that into my coaching? And at first I didn't know what that looked like. And I can tell you right now today, like a thousand percent, everything that I learned inside of design is it significantly enhances my coaching. I know how to create, I know how to show my clients how to take their vision, their dream and pull it into reality. That's what I learned how to do as a product designer. You can take an idea, a concept that doesn't exist in reality, that's never been done before. And I have the tools for how to bring that into reality. And it, I'm doing the same thing in my coaching. It's incredible. Like my clients are creating constantly in their products, in their messaging, in their life. Like I, 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 I was just getting a ton of messages from one of my clients this morning. And he's like, Katie, I'm like living my dream life. He still can't believe it. We're about 18 months into working together. And like so many incredible, he just got back from an incredible weekend in Vegas with his wife. And it's just, it's unbelievable how his dreams are his current reality. Yeah, And that's what I teach people to do. Yeah. That is so brilliant. I love that. Well, and, and it's so cool to see that yeah, you know, it's that taking your mess and making your message. That's the concept everybody talks about, but I think we're all afraid of doing that. And unfortunately, like with coaching, a lot of people are just trying to teach tactical where in your case, you're saying, let me take how I truly overcame this issue. And I'm going to apply it to other people who are maybe in my same boat. And, and you've, this is why I kind of want to pref uh, is uh, explain this this way to the audience too. You know, most of your clients are very successful people, very, very successful people. Mm -hmm. A lot of the names most of you would probably know. And knowing that and working with people like that, was there a lot of imposter syndrome coming to them when they were more successful than you um, trying to sell your services to them? Um, I don't think I understand your question. Was I feeling like an imposter? Yeah, were you feeling that? kind of like an imposter trying to sell your coaching to somebody who maybe had more money than you or more success than you on paper? <laughs> um, really, really early on, yes. But the process that I had gone through to create real belief, Josh, like when I say that, I mean it. I truly believe in what I do for people. And I know I have a journey that I'm on and I'm creating my dream life, but I know my dream life is not necessarily somebody else's dream life. And so it's this having this really firm belief and faith in myself and what it is that I do and not no longer having this story that I need to be somebody else or something else, like looking for something outside of myself. I don't, I don't do that at least as yeah. much. And so it allows me to stand firm in who I am and what it is that I do. And by doing that, I empower my clients to do the same. So right. uh, honestly, no, <laughs> like I, <laughs> Good. I, no, don't, <laughs> I don't deal with that anymore because I know who I am and I want to be me. Yeah. Um, when my clients, when we get on the phone, they're always like, Hey, how are you doing? And something new always comes out. And this one time I was talking to Catherine Jones and she's like, Hey, how are you doing? And I said, Catherine, I love being Katie Richardson. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I do. And it's true. Like I'm not trying to be somebody else and something that I'm not. And that's exactly what I teach my clients. So 
I mean, how does this relate to the listener? It's, it's about understanding who you are, what it is that you want, and not believing that you need to be something that you're not. And if we can do that, um, our true calling, our true voice starts to surface, and we can start to take action on that and not be distracted by the noise around us. Yeah. Wow. And I'm glad you answered that way. That was such an awesome answer. So for those of you listening to this and you're saying, I do feel like I'm underqualified to be selling or, or my services to these people who maybe are more successful than me. I mean, she just gave you the key. <laughs> if you didn't get it, go back and listen to it because she's talking about adjusting where you're at. Maybe more, it's maybe it's more internal than external and you'll be able to actually start selling to higher ticket people or people that you feel like would be so far out of your reach. And Katie, I know a lot of people that come to us, they'll constantly be saying, I mean, that's one of their biggest questions. That's the reason I asked that is, you know, why am I qualified to, to work with a billionaire, right? Or whatever their measure yeah. of success is, you know, this sure. hyper successful person in fitness or, or what have you. And it, it really comes down to that. Like you said, it's, it's about that mindset and switching and switching your belief patterns and everything. So I, I love that answer. Make sure you go back and listen to that, everybody. So Katie, I want to kind of pivot here a little bit because we are coming up on the end of our time here, but I want to ask you, this is kind of a, a dovetail into a different conversation, but we talked about being a Christian mom yes, and being an entrepreneur. And then your husband right. is also an entrepreneur. And I want, I want to see kind of what your take is on this because we kind of talked about it beforehand and I'd love to have you tell the audience what you told yeah. me, but yeah. how has that been being an entrepreneurial mom, but still wanting to be a good Christian woman and still wanting to be like a good uh, Christian wife as well? Like how is that all fitting together? So there's kind of two answers to this really early on, Josh, I was resistant to entrepreneurship. I kept having these opportunities that were dropping in my lap and I was saying no to them. I'm like, I'm a mom. I don't sell products. Um, you, you can't buy my stuff. <laughs> and, um, I ha I, I kept having these opportunities and I, I was kind of as a Christian woman, woman, I'm asking God, like, what do you want me to do with all of this? Like people keep asking me to sell them products, but I don't have a business. And I started looking for the model of the woman who was living the life that I felt like he wanted me to live. Like, you know, who was a very present mother and who had a successful business. And I was looking for that model and I couldn't find it. And it kind of scared me. And I was like, I don't want, I'm not willing to go down that road only to find out it doesn't work. I was looking for that proof. And the message that God gave to me in that moment was Katie, you don't see her, but you're a creator. Like I've taught you creation. You can create her, the woman that you're, you're looking for, but you're not finding, I'm going to show you how to create her. And again, like that was bringing in my skill set of design. It was like, Oh, I know how to create. I'm going to create me. And I did, I like very intentionally created myself. So that's always been my journey is I'm not trying to be somebody else. I'm not trying to be like somebody else that I've seen out there in the world. I'm trying to be the woman that God created me to be. And, um, I'm constantly looking to him to show me how to do that. The, the second piece of this is when I had passed the million dollar mark, Josh, and that happened in our first year of revenue year one, we're like eating rice and beans. Oh, and then very suddenly we we've made a million dollars. And, um, like all of a sudden I was skyrocketed into this uh, I don't know, kind of like a rock star in my industry. Right. And that's when I started getting all this attention. And at the same time, our early stage investors said, um, we're, we're not raising the next level of money. In fact, we want to see this company burn. And I went from this huge roller coaster ride of like trying to make it, believing I'd made it to having the rug pulled out from underneath me and, and feeling like this journey is over. And I was really angry at God in that moment and felt like, why did you have me go on this journey? If it was just, if it was going to be taken from me and in that experience, um, man, it was a, it was a very hard time. I'll just tell you, I was in Taiwan with my kids. I was homeschooling the kids in a 300 square foot apartment. My husband was visiting our factories, maintaining quality and getting production of new products. Like we were pushing the limits, Josh. Right. And, <laughs> and like my bank account was very, very low, even though we generated a million dollars profitably, like I wasn't paying myself a ton at the time. And it was like 
it was really essential to get this funding to go to the next level. Like it was, it was everything. And so to feel like we weren't getting that funding and, and they wanted to see the company burn, it was like total devastation. And through prayer and scripture study, God taught me a really important lesson. And essentially what I was hearing for myself was Katie, you thought this was about building a brand. You thought it was about creating a product that I wanted you to make something into this world, but those things are cool. Um, that's not what it was about. This is about you and you becoming the woman that I created you to be. Like I've put gifts and talents and abilities inside of you. And this is about magnifying your potential. And all of a sudden my company went from being something that made me feel important and significant to being a vehicle for me to become who God had created me to be. Like my purpose shifted drastically in that experience. And all of a sudden I had so much more clarity. I was no longer needy of the business to prove something. And the business was now a tool, a vehicle, a resource for me to serve people, for me to, to grow and to expand and to learn how to lead. And, and that purpose has continually been a guiding light for me, even now in my coaching. Yeah. Wow, what an awesome story. I'm getting the chills over here. It's so interesting to, to see and hear these different stories and see that I, I truly believe that we're called by God to do these sort of things. You know, entrepreneurship, I feel like, is a calling because it's allowing us to be creators. And I loved how you yeah. said you need to create her. It's kind of a fun playoff of it. Mm -hmm. Such a cool um, example of that because you're, you're right. There's not that many people out there that you can use as a role model, but you could become that role model. So I think it's so cool that you were able to do that. Um, you're reminding me of Joanna Gaines. You two should be best buddies. Mm, but, uh, <laughs> love her. Love her. Yeah. My wife loves her stuff. Um, but I, I absolutely love that. I, I hope everybody listening to this will think through that and say, you know, like, whether you believe in God or not is what, what's your calling? Why are you here? And, and are you actually living that calling or are you just chasing the money? And unfortunately, most people will look at what they're saying and or look at what they're building as in a business and say, I'm not, I'm not doing anything other than chasing the money. And not that that money is a bad thing, but it, you could be doing the exact same thing with purpose and with a true calling and, and helping other people. So I, I love that. And, and I want to ask you this, Katie, because, you know, you do work with a lot of clients, helping them transition to that state where they are mm -hmm. kind of giving back. Um, what's one of your absolute favorite stories of one of your clients where they were able to take where they were at feeling like they were stuck and then turning it into a calling for them? So I have so many incredible clients, Josh. Um, <laughs> but the one that really sticks out as you ask that question is Catherine Jones. She came to me, she'd created a course. She'd maybe sold $5,000 worth of this course and was really frustrated and feeling stuck. And she felt like she had something really special to offer the world, yet she couldn't seem to get ahead of the competition. And I taught her some really incredible things and we worked together. And to kind of echo what we were talking about earlier, we built her business from the inside out, meaning the inside of her, and got really, really clear on what it is that she wanted and her long-term vision for not just the company, but for herself. Like, who did she want to be in this world? And as we caught that vision, she went from selling funnels to really being somebody who helps people create movements and teaches people how to share their story in a way that it moves people to action. And as she has done this, it's been really incredible to watch again. Like when she started, she'd done $5,000 total in her business and very quickly that started to double and triple. I think in within like three coaching calls, she had already five X the returns on her webinar. And again, it was like, not what you were expecting. It was, yes, there were some tactics there, but it was really kind of building her perspective, her belief in who she is. And as we really doubled down on that, and we started to pull this future Catherine into her reality and she was becoming that woman she'd always dreamed of being. And I mean, she passed past the million dollar mark, I think like 18 months into us working together. Wow. She had Russell Brunson came to her and said, will you come speak on my stage? Like she totally knocked it out of the park on that stage in front of 5,000 people, same stage as Tony Robbins and Ryan Holiday, like Dean Graziosi, like really incredible people. And she shared the stage with them and, and she, she just like, what makes this also fantastic, Josh, is yes, she did all of those things. And 
she just got married, like found the love of her life and used the principles that I had taught her and brought that to her relationship and has built an incredible relationship with this amazing man and is like literally living her dream. When she came to me, Katie, I want a really big business and I want to be happily married and I want to be a woman of God and I want to just feel like I'm on top of the world. Like those were the things that she wanted. And that's what we've built. That's what we've done. I think too often we think we have to make compromises and um, people are willing to sacrifice too much for the money. It's not worth it. And it, what's sad is when you get there and you, you get all the money and like you've destroyed your relationships, your health shot, um, it's really empty. It's hollow. And what, what I have taught my clients to do is what you're talking about. Like we bring their eternal purpose into their business. It's possible. And when you do that, you eliminate the competition. Like nobody can touch you because it's you, like you're unique, you're special. You have unique gifts and talents and abilities. And like that to me is ultimate, this, this million dollar business, this incredible marriage, this fantastic health, this deep connected relationship with God. Like that's the ultimate. And that's the life that my client, Catherine Jones is living. That's brilliant. And you've all probably heard her name now. I mean, Catherine is also just as famous as Katie is now. <laughs> so make sure um, you go check her out as well. And Katie, I want to ask you this. You know, we are coming up to an interview here. So what, uh, where's one place that people can connect with you so that they can get into your world and consume some of your amazing content? Yeah. So I limit social media in my life. Um, that being said, I try and give people kind of a, a little bit of a window into my life. Um, I'm not saying you want my life, but maybe there's things and ways in which I live my life that would be interesting to you. And so you can connect with me, katie.live on Instagram. And I'm pretty active in my stories. Again, kind of showing the balance between entrepreneurship, family, faith, fitness, and health. Like to me, that's the ultimate. And it's all about expansion and growth and really truly serving people in this world in a way that it creates long lasting impact. I love that. So everybody make sure you go check that out. So it's at katie.live. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. And I should tell everybody, Josh, like there's so much more that I could share with you that we just don't have time to right now today. And if people want, I've got a, an incredible training. I'm not going to charge you for it. And it's in my Instagram profile. Um, it's an amazing audio where I'm going to really crack your head open and help you see a much bigger opportunity that not only will grow your business, but, but will grow every area of your life. I love that. So go check that out. So it's, it's the link in her bio at katie.live. So make sure you go check that out on Instagram. And Katie, I do want to ask you this just to wrap up the interview. What is one final parting piece of guidance you could give to our audience? The greatest opportunity in front of you is to get very good at articulating what it is that you want. I think too often we start chasing dreams that other people say we should have, or maybe we've seen glorified on social media, on YouTube, and it's really easy to get lost when you don't know what you want. And so uh, I guess the advice I would give you is to get out a piece of paper right now, a journal and a pencil, and start speaking your truth. Like when you can really tell your truth and say, this is, this is actually what I want. I've been living the life that maybe my dad wanted for me or my sister or my mother, or that I thought I should want. It's a, it's a real tragedy to see people do what they think they should and not what they actually truly want. And when you can wake up to the truth of what it is that you really want, and you can actually see it and no longer deny it or ignore it or push it down, suddenly, because you can see it, it becomes actionable. You can use your choice, your agency, your freedom to choose to go create that life that you want. So start telling the truth, get out your journal, um, write down the things that maybe terrify you that you're afraid to say, write it out. And really incredible things will happen as you tell that truth. <laughs> 